that more than Calhoun, especially when he saw this. Khaled El Amin played only four minutes in the first half with two quick fouls. UConn down one at the break, and in the second half, Gonzaga down four. Quentin Hall, the shortest player on the floor from the Bahamas. Crossover dribbled by El Amin. The Bulldogs within two, 59-57. He was six of 12 shooting. Now 40 seconds to play. Gonzaga down four again. Hall, double clutch and buries a three. Come on. He had 18. Gonzaga has cut the lead to one. El Amin would be crucial. He was 0 of 12 from the field, but down the stretch, he's on the line. He hit his first free throw. He hits the second one. UConn up three, 65-62. Now under 17 seconds left. Gonzaga needs a three to tie. Jeremy Eaton gets it to Santangelo. Santangelo drives to the hoop, looking for the foul. None called. Until Connecticut gets the rebound and watch Jim Calhoun. Get it, get it, get the ball. Jim Calhoun is finally going to his first Final Four. He's now one and three in regional finals. Rip Hamilton, 21. UConn wins it 67-62. Bulldogs never trailed by more than six. Gonzaga's big guns, Richie Fromm and Santangelo, 3 of 20 and had only 5 of 21 threes, which had been their calling card. One win away from the Final Four is especially impressive when you consider that a year ago, the Buckeyes were just one win away from complete oblivion. 1 in 15 in the Big Ten. The significance not lost on Coach Jim O'Brien, who obviously remembers the days when one win was much harder to come by. I am thrilled, said O'Brien. We've had a great ride. I just want it to continue. Facing St. John's in the South Regional Final, and the Red Storm fired up. First half, Ron Artest stripped by Scooty Penn, and Penn taking it all the way. Open the foul, 22 points, eight boards, eight assists. Ohio State led by as many as 11 in the first. More problems for Ron Artest. Throws it away. Michael Red finishes on the other end. 20 for him. Buckeyes by eight at the half. Artest stunned. Just two points in the first half. Second half, Johnny's down nine, our test to Bootsy Thornton, and the foul. Bootsy at 18, Lou Cardasaka pop, the former St. John's coach looking on. Red Storm within six, and it's our test. He had nine, Red Storm down just two. 12 seconds left, it's a one-point game. Penn misses the free throw. St. John's still very much alive. Penn would make the second, it's a two-point game. Eight seconds left, the freshman Eric Barkley loses control. And Ohio State hangs on St. John's bombing. And ooh, college, Ohio State celebrates the Buckeyes into the Final Four for the first time since 1968. 77-74, the final. Ohio State shot a sizzling 55% from the field to just 39% for the Johnnies, who were led by LeVar Postel's 24. Penn named the South Region MVP. He was the only new starter from last year's club. A remarkable turnaround for Michael Redd and company. We suffered so much last year. It hurt. You know, crying after every game and wonder when, when will it ever get better. And uh, you know, for this season to, to occur and happen the way it ha has happened, you know, it feels so uh, wonderful and a relief of us finally being on top instead of being on the bottom for so long in the past six years. We had momentum going for us, but there just happened to be a couple of players, you know, named Red and Penn that were determined to keep the momentum on the side of Ohio State. And great players make big plays when they have to. And, you know, Red made them tonight. Uh, and Penn made them tonight. More on the Buckeyes' remarkable turnaround. They were 8-22 and 22 last year, the second worst season ever for any school that made the Final Four the next year. Wisconsin was 5-15 and 15 in the 1939-1940 season, one year before they won the school's only national title. Hentges game Sunday the one that produced Duke's Final Four opponent. Kentucky was trying to continue in its defense of its title. Michigan State was trying to get back to a Final Four for the first time in 20 years. And Kentucky had it taken place early. Shimu Evans. Evans drives right past back. He's tall. And he applies pressure to his head. Kentucky would lead by as many as 13. Michigan State rallying. A.J. Granger. State down two. Final seconds of the half now. Mateen, please. Please. Everyone throw your hands in the air and wave them around as though there are no repercussions. State down one, Spartans five trays in the half. That's a one-point Kentucky League. Scott Padgett stonks the three. Cleves going deep. He played quarterback. Andre Hudson, good. Nine-zip run, Michigan State in front. Kentucky struggling here. Wayne Turner, newbie. Desmond Allison doesn't hit it either. Kentucky without a point for nearly four minutes. Charlie Bell spotted in the corner. Three, Gola, 
State by seven. Irvin Johnson's proud. And then Cleves. Restaurant quality pass to Hudson is good. Spartans go on to win 73 to 66. The papers are printed. The student athletes are festive. Michigan State trailed by 13 twice in the second half, but the Spartans head to the final four now. Coming out hot. He hit a couple threes. Then he's looking for another. Got it. Duke up five. Now Duke coming on the fast break. And Elton Brand, the pass off of Mark Karcher. And then it gets worse for the ref. Karcher crashing in. Knocks the button off the ref's pants. The official asked Coach K if he has a portable sewing kit. And there's the button. Scott Thornley without a button. The Duke mascot comes over. Offers some assistance, a safety pin. When Rodman plays naked, the undressing will be much quicker. Anyway, ref's okay. Back to the game. Duke up 10. Avery putting up a three. Corey McGetty. Chinese laundry. Dipper four bucks. Second half. More from Langdon. Shane Battier. Langdon. Open a three. You're going for that fancy close. The three is good. Langdon for 23. And Duke extends its school record winning streak to 31 games. It'll be the school's 12th Final Four appearance. The eighth under Coach K. The field of Pac-10 tourney teams would be cut in half when the Ducks and Bears met in the M NIT semis. Ahmad Rashad, who was Bobby Moore when he played football at Oregon. Frederick Jones, Chris Christopherson, and a Stars born. Oregon down three at halftime. Second half, Sean Lampley directing traffic, telling his teammate to set the screen. Then Lamps will throw the lob pass for the jam. Lampley with 16 on the night. Cal pulling away thanks to Michael Gill. Michael Gill in the second half was, dare I say, in fuego. Golden Bears up 12, and then it's Michael Gill. Six for six at this point in the second half, but wait, there's more. Michael Gill, career night. He finishes with 22 and finishes off Oregon. Cal advances to the NIT final by the final of 85 to 69. Second half, Clemson appears to be cruising against the Musketeers. Tigers work it around. Terrell McIntyre, C the three, and B the three. 20 for McIntyre. Clemson built a 24-point lead with 15 minutes left, but Xavier comes roaring back. Lloyd Price, 13 for him. Musketeers had a 15-0 run, then closed it to within six. Now down three when McIntyre fouls Gary Lumpkin shooting the triple. Lumpkin hit all three free throws. Now we're tied at 73 when Lenny Brown hits the triple and Xavier's all the way back and on top. 14 for Brown, but Clemson cuts it to one when James Posey called for a foul on Tom Weidman, and Weidman is solid. It's both free throws. Six of six on the night. Clemson by one. It's now a three-point game. Brown, no. Shot 14 triples, made just four of them, and not that one as Clemson wins it. 79 to 76 as Xavier is X'd out of the NIT. Musketeers shot 37 times from behind the arc trying to get back in it, and they did get back in it, hit 14 of them. Weidman grabbed 15 boards to go with his clutch free throw shooting, and Clemson. The bottom line is, unlike college football, where 18 teams end their seasons in games named after office supply centers and website servers, only two battle-tested college hoop teams walk away victors each year, the one in the big dance and the winner of the NIT. In Madison Square, we pick things up. 2.40 to go, Cal by two. Tom Weidman and Harold Jamison. Clemson by one with the free throw. Less than 20 seconds to play. Cal down two. Gino Carlisle keeps the ball alive. And he hangs for the hoop and the foul tied at 60. The go-ahead free throw on the way. Carlisle, a transfer from Northwestern the year before the probation was going to come down, sinks the free throw to put Cal up by one. Clemson takes it right out. Under five seconds to go. Terrell McIntyre for the win. No good. Jamison's follow won't go. It's time to party. Karama Fiesta forever. But the bus leaves for the airport at 5.45 in the morning. So the Bears battled back from an eight-point deficit for their first postseason title of any kind in 40 years. The comeback should come as no surprise. And in that game, Mateen Cleaves, three of 17 from the floor. Said the Spartans' A.J. Granger, perhaps wishfully, quote, we were a totally different team back then. Now the court in St. Petersburg would be a place to see if that would be the same. Coach K trying to pass John Wooden for second all-time in NCAA wins with 48. 
John Wooden in attendance at this game, and Brand. Elton Brand also in attendance, and didn't Michigan State know, know it? Brand with six of Duke's first nine points. He had eight and 13 in the first half. Then Duke playing some defense, leading to offense. Langdon to Corey Maggette. He had nine in the first half. Duke led by 12. Second half, here comes Michigan State. Morris Peterson, no. Antonio Smith cleaning up the mess. Spartans on an 8 nothing run as they cut the lead to six. Brand then running the break with three fouls. A wise decision, no, because Mateen Cleaves draws the charge. Brands picked up his fourth foul with 10 minutes plus in the game. Duke's lead cut to three until Trajan Langdon drive back shown. A season low seven, but it doesn't matter. Brand is bumped. Then Duke firing from the outside. William Avery, no problem. It's now a seven point game. He had two threes. There would be no magic for Michigan State. Duke up seven, it's over. As Coach K tries to win his third national title of the 90s, Dukes wins at 68-62, Brand 18 points, 15 boards. So on the same floor a year ago that saw them blow a 17-point lead. The team was so bad they could hardly run the drills in practice. This is a school that one season ago was in the midst of a 20-game conference losing streak. If you take a short-term view, UConn's Final Four birth far less miraculous. But consider, this is a school that two decades ago measured success by ECAC New England championships and Yankee conference titles and used to consider Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire among its arch rivals. So a somewhat unlikely national semifinal matchup and an unlikely number for Scooney Penn had to wear 35 after his number 12 jersey mysteriously disappeared. First half, Khaled al to Kevin Freeman. Beautiful pass by El Amin. Open the foul. El Amin and those Freeman at five points and seven boards. Buckeyes coming back, though. It's Penn, the block from behind, and to Michael Red for the layup. Buckeyes cut it to one at the half. Second half, Huskies turning some defense into offense. Ricky Moore forces Scooney into the bad shot. Moore running down the rebound, and here they come the other way. It's El Amin to Rashabel Jones. Huskies' largest lead of the game at 10, one of El Amin's six assists, also at 18 points. Buckeyes not out of it, though. Brian Brown the strip. Michael Red the finish. Red let the Buckeyes with 15. They're down three. Less than two minutes to go in the second half. Huskies up four. Shot clock running down. Richard Hamilton doing what all Americans do. Hits the jumper. He finished with 24 points on 10 of 17 shooting. Jim Calhoun defeats Jim O'Brien for the 19th straight time, dating back to O'Brien's days at BC. The Huskies take it by six in their first ever Final Four game. El Amin taking much of the credit afterwards, saying, quote, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. All this team was missing was a player of my stature and leadership. All Ohio State was missing was shots. Just 37% from the field, pen and red, it's just 32 percent. We're not out to prove no points. You know, we we did everything we did this whole season. You know, we just gonna let our game do the talking. We said we're not gonna go out there and, and and just try to match up against them two because it's a five on five game. And as long as we play with our teammates, you know, we'll be victorious. And that's what we did. I think Rip is right, but I think our pride will stepped up a little bit. You know, we were, we felt threatened that that a backcourt was going to try to outdo us, but we, we really knew that it was a, a five-on-five game, and we had the better squad, and we really worked with our squad and got the W. This team is, they're great. I think they're the best team probably in the country on, you know, turning mistakes and bad shots into easy layups. And this is, I think, a, uh, a fitting ending for them anyway with all the success that they've enjoyed throughout this past decade. For them to get an opportunity to play for the national championship, I think, is uh, is uh, is fitting. UConn and Duke had it out for all the marbles in St. Pete. And Elton Brand, the Naismith Player of the Year, hooking up with first-team All-American Richard Hamilton. Early going, Colin Elamine strips Brand. And Elamine dives, the keeps the ball alive with some nifty dribbling. Gives it up to Hamilton, who hits the fadeaway. UConn down 9-6. Ricky Moore kept them in offensively early going. 13 of his points in the first half, and Grant Hill, Thomas Hill, Christian Leitner, all wearing looks of concern, but Trajan Langdon eased their concern. Shortly before halftime, the three and the foul. Duke up two at the half, thanks to the four-point play. Elton Brand hounded defensively, double-teamed throughout. Finally breaks through right here, puts Duke up five. He had 15, did Brand. UConn's game plan, push it up, flourish in transition, 
get it down before Duke can set up defensively. And here, Albert Moorings and the foul. UConn up four. Hamilton off the transition game. Sets up for three. UConn up five, 62-57. Moments later, Brand tells Hamilton, no. we're going the other way. William Avery sets up Brand. Nice catch and finish. Duke within four. Duke within one. Brand for the lead, but Jake Voskel says, no. All ball, lots of body, no foul. 3.30 to go. Two-point game. Hamilton for three at 27. UConn up five. UConn's lead is four under two minutes to go. Chris Carroll for three. No, Shane Batty, a tough offensive rebound in traffic. Sets up Langdon and he hits it. Langdon at 25, Duke within one. 110 left, one point game. El Amin amongst the trees. Onions. UConn up three. 12 seconds left, Duke down one. Coach K eschews the timeout. Langdon gets hounded into a travel by Ricky Moore. Coach K's family sensing perhaps the end is nigh. Duke fouled with 5.4 seconds left. Al Amin hits both free throws, rattles that one home. So Duke needs a three to tie. Trajan Langdon takes the inbounds, pushing it up. Can he get it off? The answer is no. And UConn knocks off Duke. 77-74. Jim Calhoun and El Amin, national champions, William Avery who went to grade school with Ricky Moore, the defensive hero in Augusta, Georgia, goes off the court on the losing end, as does Duke. 77-74, UConn snaps Duke's 32-game winning streak to win its first national title and its first try. It's the Big East's first title since 85 when Villanova shocked Georgetown. Hamilton, a game-high 27 points and a worthy tournament MVP, 145 tournament points in all in the Tournament of the Brick. UConn shot 53% from the floor and led by Ricky Moore played great D. Avery, 3 for 12. Brand only 8 shots. Duke shot a season low 41.1%. Excluding the UConn women's title in 95, this may just be the biggest thing to hit the